If there is one thing that is abundant in this day and age, it's the feel-good gurus telling you that the sky is the limit, you have what it takes, follow your passions, things of that nature. And to be fair, this channel itself, it suits that category to a certain extent, I'm not gonna lie. But what many of those gurus skip, and where I hope to differentiate myself, is analysis of the brutal facts of reality as well. I read a great book called Good to Great, and in this book they came up with a concept known as the Stocktail Paradox. And the basic idea behind this is that you have to confront the most brutal facts of reality while simultaneously having the faith that you will prevail in the end. Most people, a lot of us, you and me, we are often afraid of reality, of shining light on the brutal facts, because for whatever reason we might have constructed a fantasy in our heads how we perceive reality to be, and we don't want that story to end in a bad way or we don't want anything to interfere with that. But the truth of the matter is, by you scrutinizing reality, you're actually doing yourself a huge favor because now you know how the road looks like, you know where to go, what steps to avoid and what steps to turn towards. This is the whole essence of this video and what we're gonna go through today. And yes, believe me when I say this, I know the extreme ambiguity behind those terms like reality or brutal facts. I know what I'm getting myself into with this video. So like most of my work, instead of trying to explain everything literally, I'm gonna explain it with a lot of practical scenarios and symbolism. Let's say we have a basketball player who wants to join the NBA one day. He eats and sleeps and drinks basketball. It is his life. He's dedicated. He's ambitious. All of those parameters are in check. Except for one. He stands 5'9". Now it would do him pretty good to scrutinize some brutal facts about the NBA. The average NBA player in all positions from 1975 to 2022 has been fluctuating between 6'6 to 6'7 and that is the average height. And even in quote shorter positions like the point guard it has been fluctuating from 6'1 to 6.2.7. So. It's still a big disadvantage between his height and the norms, regardless of position. Is all of this to say that the situation is hopeless for the 5'9 player? Let's dive deeper into the subject, let's look at some facts. There has been, throughout the NBA history, 25 players that have been under 5'9, with 5'3 being the shortest, Moxie Boots that is. And remember, at one point, this number was zero, it only took one person to start a new trend. We have then in our disposal very valuable information that we can scrutinize in those 25 players. We can see what the common denominators are of those 25 players, what differentiated them to allow them to actually join the NBA despite being so severely disadvantaged in height. So after careful scrutiny of those 25 players who joined the NBA that were under 5'9", we might conclude, okay, they were all point guards, so this is valuable information for me as well. If I'm under 5'9", the odds are high that I should be focusing on my role as a point guard. We might conclude that they were incredibly quick and agile, way above the NBA norm. They had incredibly high work ethic and they were incredibly skilled and game aware. Those are my entry points that I can now focus on if I'm under 5'9 and I want to join the NBA. What if I had not scrutinized reality? Would I have come to those conclusions or would I be wasting my time somewhere that is not in line with my strengths and my weaknesses? This is the whole point of scrutinizing the brutal facts that medicine that might taste bad initially but is very beneficial for you and your future. But there is a paradox to all of this because even the taller players, even they will have extremely high work ethic, they will be incredibly skilled and game aware and they will have all the athletic qualities as well. Now all of those attributes, they are already non-negotiable prerequisites for NBA, so it is simply not enough that you have those. You need to be way above the norm because you are already disadvantaged in the vital point that is height. So that only means that you have to edge them out and be above the NBA norm in those other attributes. Like it's not enough to be in the NBA norm because they are already there, the taller players. So you need to be significantly above that. And once again, the purpose of scrutinizing the objective reality of your situation is not necessarily to make you quit or discourage you. It is so that you can know what to focus on, the pieces that are helpful to your goal and what to avoid. Because energy is not infinite, it is limited. You need to direct your energy in the appropriate place and the direction. 
Now, another important point is to choose the right goal that is appropriate with your circumstances, because circumstances, they matter, and sometimes they are at extremes. And when circumstances are at an extreme, the matter is very polarized, it is very evident. So, to explain this topic, I'm gonna give you two more scenarios. We have two sprinters who are about to compete in the Jamaican National Championships. Sprinter A and Sprinter B. Sprinter A finishes at 5th place. After that he concludes, I have the capacity to reach the Olympics. Is this a valid statement? Let's look at some circumstances. For one, Jamaica is a top nation in sprinting. Therefore, placing 5th at a top nation is an impressive feat. Number two, he's 17 years old, meaning that he has plenty of room to grow, he has not even physically matured yet, all of those years that lie ahead of him. The future looks pretty bright. Number three, he has very low quality coaching. He lives in a rural area with no good facilities, no good coaching, people are there just to help out each other. Imagine if he had a world class coach in a world class facility, how much more he could grow. And lastly, he's a part-time soccer player. Imagine if he quit soccer that is taking so much of his time and focused completely on sprinting, all of his energy on this one sport in sprinting, how much more he could improve by a focused approach like this. And despite all of those factors, he's still placed at fifth place in a country that is so world-class in the sport of sprinting. Therefore, we can conclude that based on those circumstances, if he makes some proper adjustments, there is a very high chance that he can reach the Olympics. Yes, because once again, Jamaica is a top country in sprinting. Everyone in the top 10 there in the national championships, they are already in world-class material probably. So all of those things that he did previously, like there's a lot of adjustments to make and the road is pretty much paved for him. This is an extreme example of good circumstances that you could use, like a good scrutiny of reality that goes in your favor. Now in contrast we have athlete B who finishes at 20th place and he concludes the same thing. I have the capacity to reach the Olympics. Let's take a look at his circumstances. So is finishing 20th place an impressive feat? I guess it, it depends on what you compare it to, like in the national championships itself probably not so much, but in the grand scheme of the whole world, then yes, 20th place in a country like Jamaica is still impressive, so for the sake of it, let's just go with it. He is 30 years old, which means he is way past the median age for peak athletic performance in sprinting, his power is declining each year, he's growing less twitchy, his explosive muscle fibers are declining each year, so this is not doing him any good for the future, obviously. Number three, let's say he trains at the country's top training center with the best privileges, top coaching, good nutrition, good programming, good technical cues, all of this. Despite this, he's still placed at 20th place. So how much more can he really improve? He has too much of a low margin of improvement in all of the areas that are improvable. He already has top coaching. He has very broad experience. How much more is there to improve? Perhaps he can improve a little bit, but to reach the Olympics, basically he will be up against 19 other people that are probably young, they have not even reached their peak yet. For him to say reach the Olympics, like, it's pretty unlikely because his margin of improvement is so low, all of the workable areas like we talked about, he is already like in the peak in all of those. He might, with some ingenuity, like, improve his position by one or two points, but to reach the Olympic is very unlikely. And all of this brings us to another point. Set realistic goals. We live in a generation that keeps preaching the message of, okay, aim for the stars and land on the moon, aim high, you have the capacity to achieve everything, yada yada. Okay, yes, I can agree with that. It's important to have high goals. We all want to become grand at something but the truth is if you're not even achieving your smaller shorter term goals that are within future within your grasp how do you expect to achieve those bigger goals it's not practical it's not realistic because the truth is there is nothing more demotivating that than constantly setting unrealistic goals and falling short every time being met with disappointment this kills motivation and I don't care what most of the gurus say, but 
I am fully convicted that motivation matters. Yes, you're not gonna be motivated every time and you're gonna need discipline. But you can't rely on discipline forever because every human, they have a breaking point. We are not machines, we have emotions. We can't constantly work like robots. So motivation is like a skill that you have to keep building by setting yourself smaller, manageable and within the grasp realistic goals and achieve them one by one. This builds you momentum. And when you have momentum, you get one step closer to your bigger goal. You can't expect to achieve your big goals if you're not achieving your smaller, realistic goals. And all of this brings me to my last point. Is this long-term goal of yours worth pursuing? Is it the best thing that is suitable for your unique makeup? Another thing that is fluctuating in the community, if you will, is the follow your passion. You hear it everywhere. I think of something better. I say follow your advantage. Because the truth is your passion will not remain a passion for too long if you are constantly met with disappointment. Passion is synonymous with love. And love, when it does not meet our expectations, it quickly turns into resentment. And you don't want to reach a point where you resent. If you follow your strength, you will have an easier time making realistic goals and achieving them. Why constantly be met with disappointments? Why do this to yourself when there is an area where you can feel like this was made for me, I can, I can be successful here and I'm noticing results? Because as cliche and fortune cookie as this can possibly sound, everyone has a unique makeup. You have strengths and weaknesses that are very volatile in certain areas. You are very good at one particular thing or worse in another. When you were a child, this was very evident. You could notice directly like what activities you were more inclined towards. In your upbringing, you can notice what you constantly got compliments for. All of those are subtle hints of what is your unique makeup, where you find the most ease in life, what just makes sense to you. For some people, certain things just make sense. For the Mozarts of the world, music just makes sense. For the fighters of the world, if you will, uh, MMA just makes sense, or wrestling, or whatever else. You need to scrutinize yourself, analyze your strengths, your personal advantages, to find this small niche where you can excel and just flow. Then you will not have to overly rely on discipline so much, because you will do things voluntarily. You will do things because it's so it just makes sense for you and this is the whole point thing whole the point of the whole thing for you like to be fair also when you're starting out somewhere when you're starting out with an activity it's too early to make conclusions like this like this is not for me like blah 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 you have to give it some time this is a very important point that you have to keep in mind you have to give it some time you have to find out and you will be met with a lot of doubters and doubts on the way, like this is not for you, choose another area, yada yada. And it is not that opinion of them that matters, it is their objective reasoning and data that matters. Never listen to an opinion just for the sake of the opinion, listen to the reasoning behind the opinion. That is what makes something truth or false. 